is top secret. All right, Lady Ada, what's uh, this? This is a blinking LED. No, it's a blinking TFT. This is a round 2.1 inch TFT. And I just have it turning on all the pixels white and off. And the reason I'm doing that is I'm actually trying to debug this, which is trying to get the large 4 inch screen working with the ICN 6211. And it's not working. And I don't know what's up. And I think it has to do with the screen initialization, which happens over SPI. But the problem is I've got Raspberry Pi, kernel, device tree overlay, ICN configuration, SPI configuration, AT time. There's too many variables. So what I do is I'm actually testing this up first on a known working platform because I'm always like start with a known working thing, change one little tweak to you know figure out what's going on, and then um, adjust and adapt until you figure out exactly what your root cause is. And I actually don't have the ESP generating any TFT signal. What I'm just doing is the SPI configuration. And if you look over here on the oops, the data sheet. Sorry, all pixels on. There you go. Um, there is this mode called all pixels on, which will turn on all the pixels for you. And you don't have to have TFT signal. It just does it directly from um, the SPI commands. And so over here, what I've got is a little bit of code that sends the init sequence, init sequence, but then it appends to the init sequence the command to turn all the pixels on and off. And so now that I know that that init sequence is good, I'm going to move that code over to the AT Tiny over here. And that'll let me know whether I've got the SPI init code and wiring working. And then I can work backwards, fix the ICN, fix the device tree overlay, and basically get it all working with a Raspberry Pi. Lady Ada, what is this? This is the biggest blinking LED. <laughs> now, this is a... Hello, world. I know. Hello, world. <laughs> this is a four-inch round TFT display, and I'm trying to get it working through the ICN 6211 with a Raspberry Pi 5 through the DSi converter. DSi converted to uh, the ICN, to TTL, to this uh, TFT. And there's three things i got to get working. i get the device tree working on the Raspberry Pi. I've got to get the ICN config um burned into this over I squared C, and I've got to get the SPI configuration on this TFT. And what I'm testing now is the SPI configuration. So what I've done here is, you know, I write the SPI init code, I'm using like an AT Tiny, and then I have a loop down here where I'm just sending um, the MIPI SPI commands 22 and 23. And what those do is turn all the pixels on and all the pixels off. So I've isolated just making sure that the SPI init working Next, I'm going to do the ICN configuration. All right, Lady Ada, what's this? There's some beautiful color bars. Uh, yeah. This is the color bar demo um, register setting for the ICN 6211, which is the chip that I'm using to convert DSi from the Raspberry Pi 5 to this RGB TTL display, this 4 inch round 720 by 720. I just got the SPI init code working. Turns out uh, you have to set the bits in the order that they come in. Who would have known? Uh, so that once that got working and had all the LEDs turn on and off, um, the next step is to verify that this config works. And so uh, you have to set the resolution and the VSync, HSync, you know, whatever, porches, PLLs. And then there's a bit you can set um, in called the BIST mode where you can set different uh, tests. So this is the oh wait, so I'm searching color bar, chessboard, uh, outline, and color switch. And these allow you to test that the TTL connection works. So I'm still not using data from the Raspberry Pi yet. This is just running directly from the ICN 6211. I am programming it using Blinka from the Raspberry Pi using I squared C so I can like try all the different settings. So far, so good. So SPI works, I squared C works. The last piece is to get the device tree overlay going. Early data, what's this? This is the Raspbian Bookworm desktop working on this large round 720 by 720 display. I got the SPI network working, I got the ICN 6211 I squared C working, and I've got the device tree overlay working. All three things uh, together mean that we now have a working display, and I've got a little mouse plugged in. And what's cool is, you know, um, this is a full uh, Raspbian build, so it's got like, you know, all Linux support. So. You sent me a file you wanted me to play on here. I just regularly just send me Stargate. You just send me, so you basically send me a Stargate every morning. Yeah, it's it's kind of weird. What's up with that? So just because the screen is small, what yeah. I can do is I'll loop it and I'll make it full size. 
And wait a second, and the auto thing will yeah. disappear. And now we've got uh, your very own video Stargate, something you've always wanted. Yeah, look at this. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, so um, so far so good. So just have to repeat this for every display, but so far this cool round display is working very nicely. Yeah. On Linux, Raspberry Pi. Here we go. Going Chevron's into space. Chevron's locked. Do they make a noise? Like, what? Pew, pew, they do. Pew. I don't know. They do. Okay, activated. Let's go. Yeah. Into space. Cool. All right, Lady Ada, what's this? Um, this is a 3.5 inch 480 by 320 capacitive touchscreen. So we just wrapped up the revision for our uh, 3.5 inch 40 by 320 version of the resistive touch feather wing and the breakout. And I realized that I actually had like a bunch of these kind of nice capacitive touch displays. Um, so this is one part of the test where I load a uh, image off of an SD card. Let me reset it. You can see it's, it's a little slow because this is running off of a mega. Um, and that tests the SPI interface mode. And then I can flip this switch over here and see eight. And then it will test it in 8-bit mode, and that's um, also testing the capacitive touch um, interface. Uh, this is actually a multi-touch, although this demo only shows a single touch. It actually can recognize five fingers. Um, so this is built on a Mega, uh, and you can see like there's a lot of GPIO used here. That's why I need a Mega, because lots of big, because it's using both the SPI and I2T and 8-bit uh, interface. Um, but so far, so good. So this is ready to rock. I'm going to finish uh, the um, adjustments for the tester, and I'm going to order this, and I'll be in the Adafruit shop soon. Really? What's all this? Uh, I am updating a whole bunch of testers. Not only did I have to do hardware revisions for boards like the Clue, which I'm still working on, the Feather NRF52840, 840, and the Itsy Bitsy, um, but, well, I'm supposed to actually also be uh, pico find the testers, but and more importantly for me right now, I am updating these testers to install the latest teeny uf2 bootloader onto these boards because the bootloader uh needs a couple of adaptations to be able to load the latest version of circuit python because the binary got larger and so it's not trivial for people to update the bootloader although you can do it you just have to run it in arduino so instead uh what i've done is i have you know reburned the test uh binaries and i'm updating this sd card so now when i program it um it still does all the same programming and test but the final version of the code that gets loaded onto the feather is going to have um, the most latest bootloader. So let's see it's programming final and passed. So we're gonna reprogram all these boards and get them back into the Adafruit shop updated. What's going on this week? Back in the vault, 